Welcome back. Today we are going to look at validating websites. So what this means is once you've done a Google search and you have narrowed down your results and found some websites that you think might be of use to you in your research, we want to find out if it's actually any good. And how we go about doing that is we need to validate the content of the website, maybe find out who the author is, the purpose of the website. Um, we might want to compare some of the content on one website to a secondary website. But let's just go through a process of um, va validating one website. So we're going to pretend that I'm a student and that I have to do um, a report on extinct animals. And I found the best website ever. So we're going to go check that out. Help save the endangered Pacific Northwest tree octopus from extinction. I've never even heard of this animal. This is awesome. I'm really excited about this. So we've got information, FAQ, um, and look at this. We've even got um, a YouTube video from Merriam Webster dictionary people that talk about whether or not you call them octopuses or octopi. Um, so that must mean it's pretty, pretty good. Sightings? Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We've got some pictures and some people documenting what they've seen. There's a nice close-up. Oh, they even travel in the snow. Okay, we'll have to look at that, but it seems like there's lots of information there. Um, some media, so there's some additional literature there and activities. We have a trick-or-treat for the tree octopus. Okay. Um, well, let's go back to the presentation and see where we go from here. It looks awesome. The site's neatly designed and it has some images of this octopus I have never heard of. And there are even some pictures of a tree octopus being captured by a hawk. Um, I can determine when it was last updated, and I made a little error in my presentation there, but if I scroll down to the bottom of the website, it says it was created in 2009 and updated in 2009. Um, interestingly enough, if I go to the information page and scroll down, it was created in 1998 and updated in 2011. So initially I thought this was maybe really current information, but I'm not exactly sure if it is or not so that might just be like an automatic tag that's put in there to put in some dates but I think generally the website looks good and clearly the purpose of this website is to give out information to save the tree octopus right well let's take a closer look at what we've got here we're gonna pretend we are private investigators and do some serious digging to see if we can trust the website that I found so we're gonna begin with truncating the web address until it's at the um, root directory. And what you do to truncate a web address is you just put your cursor at the very back of the web address and back up until you are at the next slash. Delete that slash and hit return. Wow, now I'm at Zapato Productions, your source for conspiracies and other diversions. Serving the paranoid since 1997. This is a little strange. I'm not quite sure why the tree octopus website would be hosted on this domain unless maybe this is the company that produced the website that's kind of the only connection I can really make but I'm just gonna poke around here a little bit and see what I can find that's interesting hmm. okay well I might come back and click around this a little bit. I'm not quite sure. What's this? A foil deflector beanie. Practical mind control protection for paranoids. That's a little bit odd. Okay, well, let's go back to our show here. So you can use that truncating anytime you want to back out of a website. So when you truncate a long URL, even if there's several slashes, you can delete one folder at a time from one previous slash to the next and hit return each time you delete a folder and see where you end up as you back out of that website. So for example, you could um, maybe look at, uh, you know, like a basic site like www.schools.com. There might be a slash and then it might say, you know, have a class name English and then another slash. 
uh, fall project and another slash and you know it could be fall project one and another and you can you can just back your way out of that website to keep hitting return and getting uh, a better feel of what is all contained in the bigger picture of that website so remember that truncating can help you out there so where did we end up well by truncating and getting to the root directory you find the main start page of the entire website so if you backed right out of um, the tree octopus one we ended up at Zapato Productions a website that states it's a source of conspiracies and other diversions um, I'm gonna ask you to pause this presentation and take a look at the content of the site and then I want you to think about what the content of that site might have to do with the tree octopus so pause and then come back to me so the website's purpose what do you think the purpose of this website on the tree octopus might be write down a few of your ideas and so you can go back and check later on in our investigation I'm curious to know if you think the website's purpose has changed from one strictly of information, which is what I initially thought it was, to something else now that you've read that uh, main website page, the production page. So if we were to take a closer look um, at that site, so I'm just going to go back to this site, and one thing I found interesting, which I wasn't really paying attention to, but this maiden Cascadia, I didn't know what that was, so I'm going to click on it, and what do I find? The Republic of Cascadia. What is this? And so as I read through this, it says the former American states of Oregon and Washington and the former Canadian province of British Columbia must join together as a sovereign nation. Only then can we have self-determination and take our rightful place in the global community. Okay, I've never heard of this at all so I'm really not quite sure what to um, make of that at all so that's another thing I'm just gonna write that down I am confused and I'm going to keep looking at this um, Cascadia site and you know what I find out and this really throws me for a bit of a loop as I scroll down on this site oh look they've got a flag Postal Authority, so they've got their own stamps. That's interesting. But links to Cascadian and related sites. Bureau of Sasquatch Affairs, Sasquatch Militia, and the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus. I'm trying to figure out what these three things have in common and why they would all be part of this root directory. So I'm getting a little bit confused. And if I hit the Bureau of Sasquatch Affairs, look at that. It's part of that directory as well. So if we continue on, between you and me, do Sasquatches exist? And if they don't, maybe the tree octopus doesn't exist either. And if the tree octopus doesn't exist, then that website is really misleading. I'm going to go Google that Lyle Zapato, and I'm going to find out a little more about him. So when I Google his name, interestingly enough, I find this article in defense of the endangered tree octopus and other web myths? That seems like it might be interesting. So when I click on it and take the time to read the article, which I would like you to do, I actually come across this. The tree octopus is completely fictional. Apparently, uh, Lyle Zapato, a Washington-based author and web publisher, invented the tree octopus in 1998. The creature is the star of an extensive and hilarious parody website that has improbably worked its way into the center of the debate over literacy and internet age. In the internet age, so basically, it's a joke site. He's created it, and he's made it so believable that. He has stumped a lot of kids, um, the, and kids didn't read the content and, and think critically. So um, I want you to read this whole article. It's quite interesting on how uh, the kids were fooled. So if we continue with our presentation, 
and we have confirmed it is a myth site, and you've read the article as well, what does that mean to us? Well, it means that we need to think critically about what we read. Um, truncating web addresses, reading critically, checking out your links and looking for contact information and Googling those people are skills that can help you validate websites. So what I'd like you to do now is to practice evaluating websites by looking at a few other sites and I've listed a few here and I'd like you to go through some of the processes that I've gone through with you. Um, you can't truncate this website but you could truncate this website and um, check out the links on the websites, check out the contact information and see what you come up with. And really the bottom line is you need to think critically. As you look over these sites and read the information, think critically about what you're reading. Does it make sense to you? If not, where can you go to verify the information you are reading? Would another website on the same topic tell you the same thing? Bottom line, use your head. So if we find information out about the Pacific um, Northwest tree octopus, if we Googled tree opt octopus, I wonder what else we might come up with. That would be another route for us to go to validate some of our information. So go back, look at those websites, practice um, validating the content of your websites, and then use those new skills in your research. Have a great day!